All right, Soil Fam. So, we're going to take y'all along on this journey with us called soaping. Soap making. I mean, let me warn you first. <laughs> it is highly addictive. Fun. Um, you can be creative when it comes to soap making because the possibilities are endless. The benefits are amazing. So, um, it's a lot of steps to soap making and a lot of precautions you want to take when it comes to soap making. So, I will not give direct, I mean, exact measurements because my husband custom made a slab, a um, mold. So, and I'll show you that in a few minutes, but we had to formulate our soap because we using specific products and a custom made slab. So, if you get into soap making, you definitely need to do your research and learn how to work a soap calculator so that you can be able to fill whatever you fill in, whether it's um, single molds or one block mold or whatever. Ours is kind of big. So, we had to formulate ours so that our soap formula would fit our slab or our block, as you will see in a little bit. But, soap making, it's fun. You can be creative with this. I mean, when I say creative, you can be very creative with this. So, we have melted our solids, which we have over here behind us cooling. And here in front of us, we have some of everything. In this bowl I have uh, oils. Like I said I have our solids behind us. We have uh, essential oil here and you want to measure this stuff with a, um, a digital scale and you want to be exact with your measurements. So what we normally do is we'll start with whatever is the hardest melting uh, solids. Long sleeve so you can protect your skin. Gloves to protect your hands when it comes to light. And you want it to be ventilated. You don't want to stand there and breathe that stuff in. So the light is doing its thing. You want to have stuff like spatula, uh, thermometer. This one is a, what is this called babe? Infrared which is good. You want to have a immersion blender, lots of bowls and lots of little containers, all that good stuff. Now, we make honey turmeric banana soap. <laughs> Why honey turmeric banana? Well, first of all, because we grow these things here. One acre suburban homestead. We are blessed enough to be able to grow these items, so we use them in our soap products. Uh, the many benefits of them. Banana. This is some of our banana blossom. This is some of our banana blossom. Um, and this is what we'll put in this batch today. All I did was put it in a coffee grinder, grind it up. We freeze dry it and we'll show you. We, My husband harvests the banana blossoms. We freeze dry it. The benefits of the banana for your skin. Hydration and moisture. You need to be moisturized and you want your skin to be hydrated well. That's what give you that pretty skin. As most of you should know and some of you don't know, we grow a lot of tropical fruit. One, my husband's favorite, banana. He is the dancer banana man. So the bananas, once they put out a rack of fruit, it start off with a flower. We call it the flower or the blossom. And it looked like a big teardrop. It's burgundy and um, that's where your bananas are protected inside of this blossom. And as the weeks go on, it will peel off a leaf and expose the bananas. Well, after a certain amount of time, it's done. So my husband chop them off. We bring them in the house, clean them up, freeze dry them. So that is I mean, it's awesome to watch these bananas have babies or, you know, however you want to call it. But it's an awesome process um, watching these bananas give birth all the time. We get tons of bananas and we get products for, for our skin. So that's one amazing thing when it comes to raising or growing your own. But this 
is turmeric powder. So we grow a black turmeric, a white turmeric, and an orange turmeric. There is a difference in all three turmerics. The black turmeric is the is a rare turmeric and supposed to be the the best. Um, it has the highest amount of cumin in it. <laughs> the turmeric is good for healing wounds, conditioning the skin, reducing blemishes, fades and scars. It'll help that glow that we all need and anti-aging. Anti-aging. We all need want anti-aging properties in our soap and other products. So that's why we use turmeric, which we grow on our one acre suburban homestead. So um the orange turmeric, which this is the orange turmeric, is the most common turmeric that you'll find in the stores or in most of our foods. And yes, you can eat this turmeric or you can use it in your skin products. Last but not least, we raise bees on our one acre suburban homestead. Lots and lots of bees. Honey. We. So this is our honey from our beehives here at Black's Tropical. Honey has so many benefits to it. Oh my God. Um, we had a friend, she passed away on her 108th birthday. When she would get a skin tear or, you know, a bruise or something, I would rub honey on it. And it would help her wounds heal so fast, even though I think she had some type of magical powers when it came to healing. But honey can help heal the skin, um, fight acne, help with sunburns, and fight hyperpigmentation. <laughs> so think about all of these products put together and a bar soap. So we decided, let's make honey, turmeric, banana soap. So those are the three products that we actually grow and raise here. Um, other products we use, like the shampoo ginger is great. Oh my God, I love the way that stuff smell. It is amazing. You should check that plant out. It's called Awapui or shampoo ginger. It is beautiful. But the sap that the, the pine cone gingers give you is amazing. Another one, blue butterfly pea. I do love to drink blue butterfly pea tea or lemonade. But it also has its benefits for the skin. So definitely check, check out blue butterfly pea. It is amazing for the skin also. So, with that being said, let's get to making some soap. Um, I'm trying to think to make sure I haven't left anything major out, but make sure you measure out your your ingredients to a T. Um, all right. So some of the other products that um, we don't have here right now. Well, we have them, but we're not using them in this soap. Uh, like shampoo ginger, aka Awapui, pine cone ginger. Um, it has so many names, but if you look up shampoo ginger, all this should come up. But the benefits of the shampoo ginger, other than it smells amazing. I have to keep myself from going out there and squeezing those bulbs and rubbing them all over my hands and arms. Because it feels great. But we harvest the sap or the nectar from the plants and put them in a little silicone molds and freeze them for soap making when we need them or when we want to use or make that kind of soap. And the benefits of the shampoo ginger is skin rejuvenation, anti-inflammatory, vitamin C, which you know is good to help with collagen and anti-aging, and it help protect the cells. So that's shampoo ginger, and we do use that in other soap products. Blue Butterfly Pea is another awesome additive for your soap. Um, it is beautiful. It's a beautiful plant, vine and plant, we grow so many of them. <laughs> I'll be glad when the bees find it and decide to take over. But until then, I enjoy it with my tea or lemonade. But it's great for the skin also. So we do use it in our soap products too. Blue Butterfly Pea. It helps ease um, skin irritation, itching, redness, acne, dryness. So it, it 
keep you hydrated and moisturize the skin. So again, that's Blue Butterfly Pea. And I highly encourage people to check into these herbs, which are great for the body, inside out. So I'm just scraping um, all of my bowls because you want to get all of your material as much as you can out of these bowls. So I'm using my spatula to scrape it. To get it all. And now I'm just mixing my solids with my liquids. Put some in if you want. I mean, but I think most of that should go on that part. All right, fam. So this is the mold <laughs> that my husband made. It is 
a little biggish, but we needed a big mold. So he made it. I mean, these molds can be expensive. Why buy it when you can make it? I got a pretty handy husband, so we are ready to pour. So you don't want your um your formula to thicken up on you too fast. So you definitely don't want to blend it too much. And you just want to get on down to business, and that's where we are now. <laughs> for like. All right, fam. So once you get your batter poured, um, you want to drop it a couple times. It may sound or seem a little dramatic. It is heavy, but you want to drop it like it's hot, so you can get all the air bubbles and get it to settle good. Now. We not artists around here. I mean, I can draw a little bit. I used to be able to draw, but that was a different type of art. So what I'm gonna do is take my little stick, run it around. I see where we messed up. The edges, and I'm gonna run it through just to make sure we got some color all through here. Now, we don't know what the inside of this soap will look like. No two soaps will ever be the same. However, hopefully we created something magical here. I'm going to let this set up for a few. I'm going to give it some time to... um to form some or solid on the top before we come back and texture it and then we're gonna let this sit then we're gonna let this sit for at least 24 to 48 hours we're gonna keep our eye on it <laughs> and see what, what what's going on this is our first time using this huge mold it's a little intimidating but 
look pretty good if you ask me. It's kind of beautiful right now. I'm kind of proud of us. So, you know, in the beginning of soap making, leave room for hiccups and mistakes. You know, nobody is perfect. As long as your formula is good, it may not turn out looking the way you want it to look. And you may have some things that you might want to keep at home and um, save for the family or give to your friends rather than trying to sell it. But for the majority of it, your soap should be good, you know. So don't beat yourself up if you have some nicks or scars or, or wear and tear somewhere along the line. Clean it up. It's going to be beautiful regardless and roll with what you got. So we'll come back and texture this in a few minutes. All right, fam. So I got my spoon. <laughs> it's time to texture. Hopefully we didn't wait a minute too long, but you want to texture it once it get a little firm and um, do some artwork in there. So we're going to see what we can do. Um, we're going to see what we can do. I got to concentrate a little bit, y'all, so pray for me. So you want to leave your soap in a cool place to um, do its thing. You know, you don't want it somewhere where it's extremely hot because your soap is hot. Like, it's hot in this mold. And if you add stuff like honey to it, you add heat to it. So you want to make sure it's getting good air and um, in a nice cool place. Some people put their soap in the refrigerator. We ain't dumb people. Right, we have done it. So, you know, when you texture your soap, it, you texture it to your liking. I, I think this is pretty good. I don't have any complaints. And what you think, babe? Yeah, it look good. So, the big thing, the big um, reveal is what does the inside look like? And, of course, we're going to let this sit for a few days and do what it do. And we'll see what the inside look like. But I'm happy with what the top look like. <laughs> and excited to see what it look like in two days. So, we're going to let this baby sit. We'll watch it change color and whatever it's going to do. Everything good. And we're going to come back in 48 hours. All right, so here we have a multi <laughs> bar cutter, and this will cut a loaf at one time. 
which save a lot of time. You don't have to cut one at a time. And they'll all be uniform. So this is a V4 cutter. I will link this cutter in the description. But it is heavy. So I guess I can call it heavy duty. <laughs> but this is a nice big cutter. And we are just trying it out for the first time today. So let's see how this puppy cut. It's like the Cadillac. So I think this cutter is pretty cool. Um, I do wish like these sides wasn't here because our bars are a little longer than the cutter. But overall, it's a good cutter. Very easy to use. Um, like I said, we just got to make sure our sides are shaved down a little bit more because our lows are a little bit longer than the cutter itself but this definitely saves time because you get a whole loaf cut at one time you want to take your time and cut and make sure you ain't getting out of whack nowhere but all of your one one loaf in a few seconds it's done get 12 bars out of one loaf. <laughs> it's funny. Can you see this? It's funny how solid this one side is. You turn over to this side and it's marble. <laughs> so that's the fun in soap making. You're not sure exactly what your bar is going to look like because you won't see the inside of your soap until 24 hours after. Now, I am collecting all of our shavings and, and all that good stuff. Um, I'm going to let this sit for a day or so before I start cleaning it up. And then we'll stamp it. So we'll show you how we plan to finish our soap off but I'll just let it sit for now and um and cure it'll start curing now your soap may change color it's gonna do its own thing whatever it feel like it's need, it need to do it's gonna take care of itself but I'm just gonna let this sit right here and then we'll come back with the potato peeler and other things to clean up and see what we want to do with our soap so the block um, with the mold my husband made, we were able to get 60 bars out of that one mold, which I think is absolutely amazing. 
Okay, so the average bar of soap is 3.5 to 4 ounce. These bars are 4.4 ounces. 4.4 is a great size for a bar because like I said, the average is 3.4 to 5 ounce. So this is 4.4 ounces. I think it's pretty good. And I like how this um, turned out. I love the way it smells. It's not overpowering. You know, um, a lot of people have issues with real scenty stuff. I think this is perfect. It's not really strong and it's not too soft the way you can't smell it. And it's not girly and it's not a man. So, you know, we are tropical fruit growers here. So, this is the fruit in us. Personal hygiene wise. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to let our soap rest, our 60 bars rest, and then we'll see you at the next step. Alright, so we have finished cutting our soaps and adding them to our curing rack. You see a little bit of that charcoal in there. Activated charcoal. Look at it. But um, I took the potato peeler and went around the sides of of this honey turmeric banana soap just because I wanted to see what turned out pretty good. Stamp looked nice. So to the Karen rack for a few more weeks. <laughs> All right, soil fam. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.